Hi, Matt Noyce. Midweek insights on a Wednesday. Lots to talk about today. First of all, we're going to talk about how the brush fire danger is going to come down because we get substantial rain that's on the way. Secondly, just so I don't forget to mention it, just be careful tomorrow morning. The rain's going to be coming in. It hasn't rained in a long time. There's a lot of, uh, of oils out there on the pavement. They're going to rise to the top when that water comes down, and that's going to create a bit of an oil slick. So you're going to find folks that will be slipping and sliding all over the place tomorrow morning. There'll probably be increased accidents for the morning commute on Thursday, and motorcyclists need to be super careful. It hasn't rained in a long time, so there's a lot of that that will be going on. Some mountain snow, that's going to come into play getting into the weekend. We'll talk about that in blustery weekend air as well. All right, here's what's going on last 24-hour storm track starting to shift we've been waiting on that right we've been waiting on that for weeks first it came into the central u.s now it's starting to line up in the eastern u.s that doesn't mean every storm's going to do this from this point forward but it's a sign that there's change and change is good when you're running a two inch deficit on rainfall over the last 30 days which is what we've been doing now you look at how much rain in the next 10 days and we won't entirely make up that deficit all at once but you do get an inch or two or a little bit more than that of rain coming over the next 10 days depending on where you are snow over the next 10 days is always a little bit trickier you don't want to take this verbatim but the bottom line is yeah we do have a chance to add some snow in northern and western new england so let's dive into it two areas we're watching at the jet stream level here this of course is the fast river of air high in the sky that can steer our storms along you got one storm development zone coming out of the central united states that's our storm that'll be shaping up for tomorrow you get another big one coming into the Pacific Northwest. Danielle has told you about this in insights the last couple of days, the blizzard warnings that are out with it. It is a powerhouse storm. It is such a well-defined center of circulation that shows up. It's a bomb storm that's coming in across the Pacific Northwest. And it's important to us because it does add more energy and moisture across the country, and it ensures things will continue to stay somewhat more active for us. Anyway, in terms of the short term, you can see the storm center starting to move east and really kind of consolidating across the northeast during the course of tomorrow and into Friday as well. One of the things we talked about right out of the gate here this week in Insights is that you're not really going to snow significantly until you're back behind that storm because you don't have the cold air coming in. That's why it's delayed on getting a change of snow into New England. That's why we really haven't been biting hard on that since early in the week, that you're going to be looking at any type of heavy accumulation over the last part of this week. There is a chance for more accumulation on Saturday. We'll talk about that in a minute. So rain, where we need it, right? All the Northeast is in severe drought, and we're going to go ahead and add some rain to it for just about everybody. This will help the firefighters have been working so hard to keep these things in check and doing a great job at that. But notice what we can do for them. We can at least add about three quarters of an inch to an inch of rain coming up just over the next 48 hours alone. A lot of that, the bulk of it comes down Thursday. Some of it's going to come down Friday. Let's get into it. This is that time when you're going to start to get the rain coming in. Six o'clock in the morning, it's already a mess in Hartford. And I do mean it's a mess. It I, Look, I don't say that every time it rains, but in this particular instance it's been so long and there is so much oil that's accumulated out on the pavement that there's no way we're not going to get a lot of crashes that'll be occurring when this rain moves in between 6 and 8 a.m in the boston area by 9 a.m it's up into central and southern new hampshire coming up into uh, the main new hampshire border near portsmouth and kittery and then it's going to continue to rain throughout the course of the day tomorrow varying intensity certainly you get one push in the beginning then it kind of breaks up a little bit but when i say breaks up you can see what i mean it's not like it stops it's just that the intensity kind of comes and goes over the course of the midday of the afternoon the good news is by the evening You've washed a lot of the oils off the road anyway. And then by the time we get to overnight to tomorrow night, a lot of that rain is going to get ready to wind down for a bit. Notice on Friday, not much going on in the morning. Could be a shower Boston Providence running down through the Cape and the islands. Also some rain that's across northern Maine. You still haven't really made the change to snow here at home. You're doing that on Friday morning, though, out of New York and uh, in northern Pennsylvania, for that matter, as well. But that's because they're back behind the storm. So they start to get some of the colder air. For us, get maybe some of the high summits on Friday start to make the change. So it'll be exciting for some of the ski areas as they start to send out some pictures during the day Friday and say, we're going to snow here at the summit. And you're going to do that both in the greens and eventually in the whites as well. But you don't look at this and say that's an impressive wintry setup, right? What you're going to get is returning showers over the course of the day Friday that are mostly in the form of rain. So what that means is in terms of total snow, you can see, wow, there we go. When we get along the Appalachians, when we get into northeast Pennsylvania, around Scranton and Wilkes-Barre, particularly in the hills, you get more than six inches of snow just through Friday night at midnight. But for us, by Friday night at midnight, very little to speak of overall. This goes back to something we talked about at the start of the Weekend Insights. We looked at the mid-level circulation, the atmospheric energy, about 18,000 feet up or so. And whenever you get a storm center, remember, there's always a counterclockwise flow around storms. So if you're going to do that, even at 18,000 feet, what are you doing? You're bringing in a southerly wind. You're bringing in warmth. And that means you're not going to bring in cold. Who's getting the cold? Well, on the north side of the storm and on the west side of the storm. So that's New York and Pennsylvania at first. And then for a brief time, that's New England as we get into Saturday. That's not going to mean snow for everybody. Some of us are going to get dry air coming in, and it does, never snows at all. That's going to be a lot of southern New England. Watch this. Timestamp in the upper left. We'll go from Friday 
into Saturday. Here's what you're going to see. There's that change to snow going on Saturday morning. It's snowing in a lot of Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northwest Maine, and eventually that peels up through the remainder of northern Maine. But what do you do for everybody else? Mostly cloudy, mostly dry and blustery. It'll be windy. Gusts coming out of the northwest going to 30, 35 miles per hour on Saturday. It feels very chilly, but it doesn't really do much across a lot of the southern half of New England. So it's very early still on the snow estimate. And the reason I say that is because I think what still remains to be written is when you get across the Berkshires and part of the Litchfield Hills of Connecticut, if you can get that storm circulation to translate east fast enough, you will end up in a little bit of the pulse that New York and Pennsylvania gets. And you may get on the order of a few inches in the higher terrain. At this point, I don't think it's the most likely scenario. So what you're seeing here then is generally a coating across some of the western hills and mountains. And then you start to pick it up to an inch of snow in white as you come into parts of the greens. And then you get the two inches or more in the blue and the higher amounts, of course, when you get to the higher summits. There is the chance, too, that on Saturday you saw that burst of snow that may carry across northern Coas County into northwestern Maine. So that could boost your amounts. Those purples would line you up with what may be over 10 inches of snow. We'll see. I know it's exciting if you're a snowmobiler. I, again, I don't think it's written uh, in stone here yet. Uh, I'd like to see how this whole thing evolves with the exact details, but that's a general kind of thought process as to where we'd end up. So if you go day by day, Thursday, we're going to end up running obviously cool with the rain that comes down, right? Thursday night, there again is mostly rain. Maybe you get a little bit of a mix going on at the summits. Friday is mostly raindrops and showers, though, and we, we look together at how they fill in more as the day goes on. But we're in the 40s, even in the valleys of northern New England. Friday night, you can get cold enough to start to make that change, particularly in the north country. And then Saturday, depends on where you are. Generally speaking, you're in the 40s, north and uh, west and central, and you're about 50 from Boston running down to the Cape. Again, blustery chilly kind of feel, raw feel on Saturday, even though it's not raining very much in southern half of New England. And then Sunday, it looks like it's a pretty decent looking day. Again, it's just going to be cool. You're going to have temperatures generally running about 50 degrees or so. So that's how things break down overall for us. If you want to get the details for your specific location, our app is great for that. It's totally free. You can get the hourly forecast, see if things will change. Put in your favorite ski area. Be able to see how things are going to do there as well. Uh, it's noise is one degree outside, weather on the App Store and Google Play. That's how it looks for now. We will always keep you posted at onedegreeoutside.com and on the app right atop the home screen.